What is up, you guys? Mental Hog back on the channel. Episode 10, double digits now, wow, of our Arsenal career mode in FIFA 22. They were in the January transfer window here of Season 2. We need reinforcements. We've got our FA Cup starting off. We've got the Round of 16 in the Champions League coming up soon. We've got top of the Premier League. We're in the title race, so lots of fun things going on in this series. And yeah, we need reinforcements. We've got an injured Odegaard. We've got a need for a backup winger. We have only one right back at the club. So we need some players. We're going to sort that out today. I hope you guys are excited to see some signings. If you are, drop your support down below by dropping a like, subscribing if you're new around here, and comment um, what else you're interested in seeing me bring into this club, or even what club you might be interested in seeing a career mode with next, because we might be coming near the end of this Arsenal career mode, depending on how the season goes. If we win the Prem and the Champions League, it's over here. So what would you guys like to see happen next on this channel? Let me know comment section down below and yeah time to bring in some reinforcements i'm gonna go ahead and start off with the banger signing i want to make for a backup winger in this team now before i make that signing i would like to direct your attention to three teams that were relegated from the premier league at the end of season one which were brentford watford and crystal palace okay this is going to be important look at fifth place crystal palace can anybody think of the name of a player that shouldn't be in the championship that plays for Crystal Palace? There's your hint, basically. And then there's also a player that I'm going to be bringing in from Brentford a little bit later on. So those are your hints, really. Two big hints about two big players. All right. I cannot contain my excitement anymore. It's Wilfred Zaha. Okay, we've got 336 million euros to spend. So money is just not an obstacle. Patrick Vieira, give me this, man. I'm going to just... Give you his value. You're in the championship. You should be more than happy to take even that much for him. They want Lakonga and money. We got. We got to be kidding. We got to be kidding. I'll give you 30 mil. Come on, Patrick. Don't be a hard guy. Don't be hard to, to play against here. Don't be hard to negotiate with. 34 million for Wilfred Zaha. Okay. Wilfred Zaha is coming to Arsenal. He's finally getting the big money move that he's been wanting to make for years. No more rumors about whether Zaha is going to a big club. It's time. Arsenal have come in. It's, we're bringing Wilfred Zaha to Arsenal, guys. This is exciting. He doesn't have to move house. It's London to London, you know? We're chilling. And Wilfred Zaha, backup winger, 82 rated, 30 years old. Gonna maybe rotate with Martinelli, but welcome to Arsenal. It just feels right to see him wearing the number 21 at Arsenal. First game simmed in this episode is gonna be our start of the FA Cup. Round three against Colchester. It's 4-0 with the second team. Zaha scores on debut. Sambi, Balogun. And then Martinelli off the bench scores as well. So nice 4-0 thrashing of Colchester to start us off in the FA Cup. I would love to go deep in this competition. Following that up, we go to Norwich and we actually drop points. Darwin with a goal for us, but it wasn't enough. Just a one-all draw. So I'm going to go ahead and make two more transfers now. The backups that I was referring to earlier, they're going to come in. First one that we need is a backup right back. We only have Maddie Cash that can play there right now. So Max Ahrens is going to come across from Norwich. And then Ivan Tony who is originally at Brentford, right? He went to uh, Sampdoria, but I'm going to bring him across as well as a backup striker. Balogun, he's scoring in sim games, but I need firepower off the bench that I can actually use in game as well. So that's going to be important, especially going deep in the Champions League or the FA Cup this season. We need to be able to have reliable backup players that can come off the bench or play rotated in some games and do well, right? So both of these players I think are going to be great. I don't have much experience using them myself in career mode, so it's going to be really fun to just have them around. If we don't use them much, we can use them in a different series at some point too, and that'd be totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and make both of these deals happen, and we will continue into our next Premier League game. And our next game up against West Ham at home is a 2-1 win. Darwin Nunez, Telemans on the score sheet for us. Score sheet? Score sheet. And uh, Burton Diaz at West Ham is a cool signing. All right, all our signings are done now following that West Ham game. I wrapped up the deal for Ivan Tony for about 25, 26 million and Max Aarons for about 20 million or so. So yeah, we've got backup, we've got firepower on the bench and we've got more defensive cover as well. And we are set. We are definitely set to continue going for the rest of this season with those signings, I think. And we were through to the next round of the FA Cup. 1-0 win against Birmingham City. But Martinelli got himself two yellow cards and got sent off. So that's great. Good job. Um, that's fine, though. We're on to the next round of the FA Cup. And we're just going to sim, I guess, every game in the month of January because really there wasn't anything that important going on. And we get a two-all draw away against Leicester City at the King Power. Madison rescues a point for them in the 87th minute. And Smith Rowe, Saka on the score sheet. Darwin missed the penalty, man. It's okay. I forgive him. 
And yeah, that's going to be all my business done. All we did was bring in those three backup players, which all we did. That's pretty massive for one one window here in January. Ivan Tony, Max Ahrens, and of course, Wilfred Zaha coming across. Obviously, we had our fire sale in the January, I mean, in the August transfer window. And then I got rid of a couple extra players. And Balogun is going to go out on loan so that he doesn't just rot away on the bench for us. He is going to go play at Borussia Mönchengladbach. And that's January done, guys. Into February, where we start off with a massive, and I do mean massive game, once again, against none other than Liverpool. We played them in the last episode, of course, and we're going to be playing them again today. So here we go. And before we get out on the pitch, actually, I have some good news. Odegaard is going to be back from his injury very, very soon. Now, it's good news for him. It's bad news for Emile Smith-Rowe because Odegaard is definitely slotting back in right away into that first team. I missed having him around. I'm excited for him to be back. Unfortunately, it's not going to be in time for this Liverpool game. Maybe we'll see him back in action for some games, maybe at the end of this month, because we're still about halfway through it now after an international break. So in a little bit, basically, we'll be seeing Odegaard back in action. So look forward to that. But until then, we have more title deciding action in the Premier League here. Liverpool are back. We have an eight point advantage at the top of the table between ourselves, Man City and Liverpool there are both tied on points at the moment. So we need to get this win. And in just like three days, we're playing Champions League football. So I'm going to announce that matchup, obviously. And we're going to play the first game, at least today. This is a site that we're going to have to get start getting used to here under the floodlights at the Emirates because Champions League football is coming very soon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Diogo Jota passes it back inside. And somebody fizzed it over the bar. Curtis Jones. I'm seeing some space in behind here for Bukayo Saka. Can he get in there? Not quite, but he's going to breeze past Rabo. Play across into the box. Darwin Nunez almost gets on that. They're not playing Kanate today, so I might have less trouble breaking down their defense. Oh my, what a challenge from Di Lorenzo. That's a yellow and a free kick in a dangerous position. If only we had Odegaard here. And for now, it looks like our best set piece taker is going to be Yuri Tielemans. So let's try and get this up and over the bar. It looks pretty good, but Alisson, of course, is going to save that. I'm not surprised at all. Oh, I see a nice run from Darwin Nunez here, but I do have Van Dyke in the way. I have to get past him first. Oh, still on it. Oh, Alisson gets to it in time. Martinelli up against Curtis Jones. Gets past him, opens up some space now for a run in behind. I'm going to try and get this to Darwin Nunez. Take it first time. That was really weak tap-in attempt, but Alisson still had to make a massive save to stop that. We could easily have two or three of our own goals at this point, but Alisson is massive. He's just so good. Okay, Matty Cash. Oh, wow. Okay, skipping a whole bunch of players there. Smith Rowe. I'm going to play it to Darwin Nunez, I guess. Get inside. Take a better shot. Alisson, you are ridiculous, man. I did wait maybe a little bit too long, but... Jeez, dude. Kieran Tierney, our captain. I'm going to play it back inside. Martinelli's on the ball. Gets past Virgil. Can he beat Alisson? Alisson is man of the match. Guaranteed Alisson man of the match. He has made so many crucial saves just in his first half. We should be up like 4-0. It's insane, actually. Second half now, and if Alisson keeps making these saves, this is going to be a frustrating game, I will tell you. If I end up with no goals at the end of this, I will be frustrated. But fair enough, because Alisson has been nothing short of amazing. Except for right now, maybe? Even now. No, even now. It's just absolutely ridiculous goalkeeping from Alisson. Oh, never mind. Never mind. This isn't good. Now what? Let's score. I am speechless. I am genuinely speechless. I cannot beat him. Maybe I'm too predictable. Maybe I'm too predictable. Lots of space for Saka, though, on the right wing on the counterattack. Can we get past Rabo? Yes, we actually can. Biggest question, though, is going to be beating Alisson. Can we do it? Oh, my God. It's Smith Rowe, the unsuspecting player to score and put us up in the 70th minute. He doesn't want to lose this cam spot. I never scored with him, and he does it this time off the post and in. I won't say that's our best chance we've had all game, but it is the one that got put away. Alisson just could not. There was no way he was going to cover all of that distance. He was on the wrong side of the goal. And in another world, that doesn't go in off of the post. So just luck, pure luck. And like I said, I need to make substitutions. So Sambi Lakonga is at cam for the rest of the game. Ganduzi in the midfield. Nelson on the right wing. We have to keep our best players fit for this Champions League fixture coming up. Liverpool are throwing numbers forward. They have nothing to lose. 
Because if they lose this game, they are definitely struggling in the title race. It's going to be very difficult for them to come back into it from this point. Ganduzi, nice through ball for Darwin Nunez, but almost got taken out for it. And now Reese Nelson is in behind. Is he on side, Darwin? He is, and he scores the second goal. Seal it with a kiss, Darwin Nunez and Reese Nelson. Liverpool, you're committing way too many men forward, and I, I respect it. I do. They have to do what they have to do, and I was really not sure if he was on side there, but I think he was just behind Reese Nelson in that run, so we're good. And Darwin Nunez just keeps adding goals to his tally. That first touch was beautiful. If I can kick this ball away far enough, that will be the end of this Liverpool game. That is, what, 5-0 on aggregate this season against them, home and away, so pretty solid performance against Liverpool this season both times. And with that, they're most likely out of the title race, I think. It's going to be, like I said earlier, too tough for them to come back and claw back those points. We would have to lose, like, so many games. It's time for the round of 16 in the Champions League, boys. Knockout Champions League football is coming to the Emirates. And it's time to announce our matchup. We finished first in our group, so any of the opponents from the groups that were second place could be our opponents, if that makes sense. So it could be Milan. It could be Roma. It could be Olympiacos. Wow, Juve got knocked out. It could be Bayer Leverkusen. It could be Ajax. It could be Atletico Madrid. Or it could be Napoli. Now, the horror draw here would be Atletico Madrid, right? That would just be the worst possible outcome. So who do we have in the round of 16 of the Champions League? It's actually Ajax. Okay, so it's not the worst matchup we could have gotten out of all of them, but it wasn't the best or easiest one either. I think it's something we'll easily get through though. We're definitely up there as one of the favorites to win the whole thing this season, so Ajax will be a good starting point to our knockout campaign to see how our team does. A lot of these players in real life would be really inexperienced in playing this kind of football, so this will be a good opportunity for a player like Darwin Nunez, somebody with just a little bit of experience, to lead this side and show them what knockout football means. And then I'm trying to see if there's any other really interesting matchups to show you. Atletico Madrid and PSG will be a fun one, of course. And then there's also Liverpool versus AC Milan. So the 2005 or 2006 Champions League final that everybody talks about, you know, it's going to be played again in, in two likes this time, round of 16. So that'll be a fun matchup. But ours is obviously more important. And look at that. I rested my players as best as I could, and they are pretty much all ready for this game. Minus one change I'm going to make. I want Zaha to play some football. I, well, he's been playing, but I want to use him. I'm going to start him over Martinelli this game. Martinelli's a little bit tired, so this will be a really good test to see how he does. And here we go. We're actually not going to be at the uh, Emirates this time. The Johan Cruyff is coming first, and they've got all of their best players. They've got Antony, Tadic, uh, Timber's still there, Alvarez. Well, not all of their best players, but a lot of them. So let's get out there at the Johan Cruyff, and let's show Ajax who's boss. I do love the Johan Cruyff Arena, one of my favorite stadiums for sure in FIFA in general, but uh, only one of these two teams in the red and white are going to deserve to go through, and should be Arsenal. Let's do it. Oh boy, Tadic down the wing. Oh, -ho -ho. Matty Cash says otherwise. No thank you. And now Saka stayed nice and wide, was ready for that. Counter-attack opportunity. Let's see, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to almost trip, and then we're going to play across. That was weird. Almost worked, but yeah, not what I was expecting to happen. Oh my god, they're sliding left and right. There's going to be a couple of yellow cards dished out next time the play stops. There's going to be like at least three of them, right? Surely. No? Just a free kick. All right. And Wilfred Zaha stepping up to take this long-range free kick. We've almost scored from one of these before, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Oh, it could happen now! Yuri Tielemans almost got on the end of that. That is insanity. How did he even get on that like so easily? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Whew! So lucky that that didn't go in. In another world, we're 1-0 down. The terrible set-piece defending is still here at Arsenal. It's some kind of curse, I swear. Okay, playing a ball straight to Thomas Partey. I like that. Let's keep this. Let's get it out here. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a run from Darwin Nunez. We can! Left-footed strike! Good save by this keeper that I don't know. Oh boy, oh boy. Ajax and Anthony getting inside our box. That was disgusting. Trying to dictate the play here on this left-hand side. I know he's like one of the top assisters in Europe last season or, you know, for the past couple of seasons. It's been a really good creative outlet for Ajax. Oh, boy. Oh, no. 
Tomiyasu, I just thought we stopped the chance, but it's going to be a penalty given in the Champions League. Just a few minutes from halftime, and this happens. You hate to see it. Rambo, he's got a big job to do here. Who's stepping up to take it? None other than Tadic himself. I was just talking about him being a creative outlet. Can he put Ajax up in this tie? No. Not happening. Not with Rambo in goal. He will not let you. Massive penalty save, honestly. I thought that was a surefire goal for them. And us going to... Zaha, hello. I thought for sure we were going to go 1-0 down there. Rambo had other ideas. Oh boy. Oh boy. What was that to start off the second half? Rambo set the sprint out of his box to stop that from going in. Okay, Pierre, that's their fullback. If this doesn't work out, we can... Oh, oh, oh. Look to start a counterattack. Please, no. Jesus, Arsenal, where is your defending? What's happening? What's happening with this team? I'm not enjoying this. Let's get this away, please. Okay, thank you. Now, Saka, I see this. I see this nice run. Can you do it? Yes, he can. Takes a nice first touch. Timber tries to stop him. Not able to do so. Can he beat the keeper? Bukayo Saka. That's our boy. That is our golden Arsenal Youth Academy boy. Bukayo Saka. Thank you so much for giving me a goal. I was, I was nervous. A few too many set pieces given away by us, but on the counter, we are rapid and electric. And what a finish, Bukayo Saka. The goalkeeper's not going to stop that one. Timber almost did, though. I like him. Another player I might want to use at some point in this um, FIFA. And Saka with six goals in the Champions League across six games. He's had a really good season in this competition. I'm really wanting to hold on to this lead as best as I can. So Ganduzi's going to come on and Martinelli's going to come on. I need some hard-working, hard-running players to help us out and make sure we carry through this at least 1-0 result. He can't get past him. Um, Strength-wise, it seems. I see a run from Martinelli. I'm going to wait to release him. This is the perfect moment. And now Darwin Nunez. And now near post. What a save. This goalkeeper. I don't know who he is, but he's really good. And now Martinelli with the ball. I'm going to try to play across back stick. Saka almost gets on that. Still have the ball. Still trying to create something with it. Ganduzi's going to go out wide. And uh, now what? We're going to play it back. Smith Rowe. Through ball to nobody. Literally to nobody. I don't know what I was doing. You have to have some kind of idea in your head before you play a pass. Remember that, folks. Ajax looking for a response, but haven't found one quite yet. We, we almost looked like we could have scored a second, but I totally messed it up at the end. And yeah, they're doing kind of what Liverpool did in the last game, where they're just throwing bodies. You see this? How many players of theirs are in the box? And I have to depend on individual excellence in my defense. To keep us in this game. I've had to do it a few times already today. And I just keep having to do it. So thank you to my back line. Oh, Saka that was so close. I'm not going to complain. Because he already scored one. But that really could have been a second goal. Which would have been massive. Saka. Nice. Maybe one more chance. Maybe one more chance before the half is over. Before the game is over. Let's play an early cross to Darwin. Takes an almost a good touch. Just, just a little bit too much on it. That should see us across, though. Yep, that's going to be it. 1-0 win against Ajax. Considering how we score so freely against teams like Liverpool, Man City, all of them, I expected better. But I'm not going to complain about a win. It was a win. I wish away goals still counted. That would have been nice, but we know those are gone. So 1-0. And at home, at the Emirates, we still have work to do. But that work is going to have to wait until next episode, because to end off this one... We are going to Old Trafford to face off against Manchester United. This is a big one, I think. So I'm going to get out there with the first team again. We're pretty rested, so we'll give them a shot. And yeah, Old Trafford, here I come. Arsenal comes to the Theatre of Dreams. This this matchup right here has quite a bit of history in the like 90s and 2000s, early 2000s. These teams are pretty massive, competing for Premier League titles every season against each other. So that's another reason why I wanted to play this one. It's got some history to it. I wanted to get out there and show them what we've got. And I've actually forgot to check and see if Odegaard is fit and ready to be back in the team. I probably should have done that before the, at least this game, but if not this game, he will be back for the games following this. Nice space here for Martinelli. I'm going to try one of these crosses, back stick. They work a lot in real life, but they don't work in FIFA, that's for sure. Sometimes they do, but a lot of the times they just don't. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
Oh boy, Jaden Sancho, that was a really nice shot in another world that goes in. But right now on the counterattack, I'm coming for you guys. Please hold while I just run and wait for the right opportunity. Inside I go. Finesse maybe? Oh, never mind. Oh, wow, and they're not afraid to go sliding in and injure Yuri Telemans. Please don't be something bad. I, I really hope that's a, not a big one. Oh, my God. Manchester United, what is wrong with you? Ibrahim Sangare, take that yellow card. We should be seeing more. What? Hello? Why? 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 I didn't aim it back at all. Not even a little bit. Ronaldo letting fly from 30 yards, but Rambo is ready for it. Wow, Partey. Partey is just flying down this wing. I'm going to play on a cross with him. That was a nice cross. Wow, Partey. That's impressive. Oh, boy. Left a lot of room there, but short up at the back the last second. Telemans looks like he's making runs again. I think maybe he's feeling good. Oh, Dean Henderson. Is that Dean Henderson? No, they actually played De Gea this time. I didn't notice that. Well, a lot of discussion about injuries in that half, but... There was a lot of potentially injured players that were going to be in that half, so had to be done. So Ganduzi's coming on for the second halves. Um, yeah, hopefully Telemans is, is okay. Smith Rowe is on the run. He's waiting for somebody to do something here. Okay, there we go. I like this run from Ganduzi. I just don't think he has really much shooting ability. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Maybe I should have just tried. I, I don't know why. I was just so nervous to shoot with the guy. He's making another run into the box. I'm just going to try and see if I can get a shot off with him this time. Nope. Okay, we need somebody with a little bit more attack in them. And for some reason, Martinelli is just always just so far back. So he's going to come on, Zaha, I mean. And I'll leave it at that for now. We have one more substitution. I'm going to maybe see if I'll wait a few more minutes to make. Tomiyasu goes sliding in. Yep. You slide on my players, I slide on yours. That's how it works. Just seems like every good run is just being stopped short. Except for ones by players like Ganduzi that cannot really sh score that well. Oh, boy. Oh boy, we just got opened up so hard at the back. Good save. Alright, come on now. Oh, what the heck? Good doozy, that was so acrobatic. I, what in the world? It's going to be nil-nil against United, isn't it? Or even worse, one-nil. Please, no. Oh god, there's so many bodies here. They're going to score. Oh, get it out. Jeez, there's always so much drama against United, isn't there? A nil-nil draw against United. All of a sudden... Arsenal just can't score goals. They barely score against Ajax. They don't score at all against Manchester United. What is happening at Arsenal to end off this episode? And to cap it all off, Yuri Tielemans sprained his knee and he's going to be out for four weeks. So Ganduzi's going to get a lot more playtime, which is good. Hopefully we can have Odegaard back now as well to help out with that because that is going to be pretty annoying to deal with otherwise. Well, we are ending off the episode with Odegaard back from his injury, which is absolutely fantastic. So We've got the month of February ahead of us, more FA Cup action, more Champions League action, more Premier League action, another massive game in the context of the title against Man City coming up. So we're just going to keep chugging along in the next episode. Really quick, I do want to take a look and see how the league table looks after that Man United game. Do we still have what I thought was a nine point gap? So no, it looks like we actually have reduced that gap a little bit. Um, currently Man City, four points behind us. However, we have a game in hand. We should be okay. We have up to maybe a seven point gap in the Premier League at the top of the table. So we're good. I think we're still okay. A little bit nervy. Hopefully that goalless draw was just a lapse in concentration and not a sign of bigger problems at Arsenal. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, episode 10 here. If you did, drop your support down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you back here for episode 11 very shortly. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and peace.